What's up guys? Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to make 3D track optical flares. So basically, we're gonna be putting flares on, on lights like this one, that one, the, f the end of the... on that side, and the these other two lights. We're, you're gonna be needing the effect optical flares. It's it's not free. You have to get it somewhere over the internet, and you will also be needing um, Buju. It's gonna be our 3D camera tracker. Um, you can use the inbuilt camera tracker, but I like to use Buju because it's better compared to the one that's inside After Effects. You you will be needing footage of. Um, the video without the view model, like this, pure world view, and one with the weapon that is green screen. Um, I recorded this using Merv underscore streams, and if you're not familiar with that, um, you might wanna search up the internet, Merv underscore streams tutorial. Um, so yeah, I just overlapped the web, the weapon. Um, weapon layer over the world layer so it would be easier for the for our camera tracker to track the world let's get started so first of all you will need to get the pure footage of just the world without the view model and you would have to render the whole thing we would be rendering the world view footage and we would be tracking it using Buju. Press Ctrl M to go to the render queue and then select output module and select the format to be JPEG sequence. Format options, um, higher quality the better it, so it would be easier for Buju to track it. And by the way, um, it's easier for Buju to track if the if the video is not that shaky. Um, now just select the directory. I recommend you make a folder first because this will render out each frame of the vi video one by one and those will be like thousands of pictures. So just start rendering and then you would have to wait for it. Okay. Um, after you render it, go to your folder and you will see all these pictures. These pictures are each frame, each frame of the video. So now start up Buju. Start up Buju. When you start Buju, you will see these. Just, just press import sequence and select, select the folder and then select the first picture. Of the of the JPEG sequences, here new folder. Here's the first picture. Press open. Um, change the frame rate to 60. The frame rate depends on the frame rate of the actual video. So, in my case, the frame rate of my video is 60 frames per second. So, send it to 60. Then just press apply and close. So, see this. Now press track features. Go to advanced and press this. Put the sensitivity to the max so it can track more. The more the merrier, the more the better. Just press start. It will start tracking the the video. Now just just wait for it for a while. So after tracking the video, you'll see these um, red pluses and yellow lines. So after that, after that, just press camera solve and uh, just press start after tracking is done and after you press camera solve you'll see these blue and yellow dots these represent the 3d world the 3d track world of the of your video clip so if you, if you looked in the 3d view um you'll see these these dots and so that's basically you the uh, the one that looks like a camera moving around the uh, the dots so yeah now we're gonna set up the scene scene geometry. Oh yeah, and tips for Buju. If you want to scrub through time like this, um, hold shift and then le left left click and then drag left to right. 
and then if you want to zoom in use the scroll wheel and if you want to pan around hold sh hold shift and middle mouse button okay so after that let's set up the scene geometry we will now set up the scene geometry because from what I know Buju still doesn't know what what the ups and down ups and downs are what left right front back is so I guess we would have to set it up let's start with the z-axis we would have to pick two buttons that's go that's that's going front and back like these two dots okay select those two dots and go to scene geometry add coordinate from hint um, select z-axis the type and connect and then update now let's do the x-axis find something that goes um, from the left to the right like um, these two these two or yeah those two so, scene geometry add coordinate from here x-axis connect update close now let's find something that goes up and down like um, these two dots S oh no select those two dots up and down scene geometry add coordinate from hint y-axis connect update close now we're gonna set up the origin it's basically the like the when your when your 3d object is in the location 0 0 0 it's in that area so just pick somewhere in the middle right here just like this button dot dot scene geometry add coordinate from hint origin connect update then there we're done now we're just gonna mark some dots so it will be exported with the camera solve let's mark this one dot because um, we're gonna be putting one flare for this one right click and flag for export and then and then this other dot right click flag for export and then if other lights don't have dots in them um, it's okay we're gonna deal with that later we can fix it later like this uh, other one and the first light here so after you're done with the scene geometry and flagging for export just press export camera solve sequence one camera solve one because this is the first sequence and export type after effects maya and make sure the this is checked this checkbox is checked and scale seen by 1000 set their directory to wherever you want like this one and I named it one because I want to and just press save and then uh, when you're done with that go to the folder and then when you exported it you will see this this Maya file just drag it into After Effects and then you'll see this number one composition copy everything in it copy paste copy paste for some reason um, it doesn't end up same at the same time the actual video is not ending up at the same time as the camera and uh, exported nulls so you would have to select the three layers of the null and the camera right click time time stretch and then just play with it until they both end up in the same time in my case mine I time stretched mine by 41.66% so they both ended up in the same time okay now that we're done with that you will see these these are your nulls so it's perfectly tracked but not perfect but it's good enough it's perfectly tracked to the lights the nulls are, not, are now perfectly tracked to the lights now let's put the the optical flares make a solid press ctrl y or layer new and solid name it flare one for me i wanted to name flare one and color doesn't matter 
pick any color you want but it won't really matter now search up optical flare flares and effects and presets drag it to the layer flare one and select the source type to 3d and render mode to on transparent now we got this layer um, layer with the flare it's tracked to the floor we don't want that we want it on that light we will put it in this light so select the null that null and press P for position we will be positioning this flare to that null so go to the layer of the flare and see this position copy the position of the null to the flare so copy it one by one copy paste copy paste so the flare is now there you can adjust it any way you want like if you want it higher or lower um, select Y axis if you want it from the left or right X axis if you want it to go forward or back Z axis we, we will be doing the same to the other light just duplicate the flare the first flare rename it flare 2 wait flare 2 and now copy the position of this other null and paste it okay now it's there you can adjust the position any way you want now it's tracked we have other lights now but we still don't have for this one we don't have an exported flag for that so just duplicate the other flare flare 3 and then just play with the position try to adjust the position until it reaches to the right one to the right position right there I want you to remember that this is 3D so whatever you may you may be seeing in this frame may not look as good as the one in the next frames so okay so we got that good we got that good in that first frame now let's put one more flare in the first light that we see in the video okay we got tracked flares now let's ram preview and see what we got so far okay so that's what we got so far seems nice so far but we got an issue like flares through walls no that's just wrong it doesn't work like that okay so we're gonna be changing some things Okay, let's start with the, the first flare, this flare. Select the layer for that flare and then and then just find the frame or the time where the light just appears where you can where the light bulb just appears. Okay, the, the light bulb appears there, so the flare will start appearing there. Will just start appearing there. So go to the brightness stopwatch press you to show all the frames and then go a few frames back like five frames back until the light light bulb is completely gone so just change the brightness to zero okay there nice see that okay if you want it to be better um you could easy ease the frames keyframe assist right click select both frames keyframe assistant easy ease or just press f9 so let's check it out okay so there yeah, we fixed that issue now you're just gonna basically do the same thing to the other flares there seems nice already so let's see what we got so far Okay, nice. So that's what we got as of now. 
So you could now unhide the weapon layer. Um, make sure that the flares are always over all the layers because that's how flares work. The last thing you will need to do is just edit the flares. So if you want to change how the flare looks, just select the layer of the flare and go to the effect controls and press options. So when you open options, this is what will show up. Okay, you can edit your flare in here like there are presets and lens objects. So good luck in making your own flare. Um, these are presets already but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just make it quick like find a preset I like. So here's what mine would look like. So if it, um, the flares totally depend on you. You can change it however you want. So, um, one more tip: if if you want to make it really nice, the the flare looking really nice, you might want to put some dirt images or dirt textures over it. So, click global parameters, the one on the uppermost top of it, and then go down to lens textures and then texture image. Set it to dirty. There's a lot more images texture images here like messy like but I like dirty okay select the fall off to one and select put up the illumination radius yeah, this totally depends on you you could edit it edit it however you want so just press ok so this how mine would look like so you could ch if it's too bright just change the scale now I'm gonna do the same to the others. So this is what mine look like um, without. So this is what my flares look like. So looks good, looks good. But mm, you could make it look better by adding color correction. I'm not gonna tell you how to use magic bullet looks, but I'm gonna add it anyway. So I, uh, you could add adjustment layers by pressing Control Alt Y or Layer, New, um, Adjustment Layer. So whatever you put in adjustment in the adjustment layer, whatever effect, will affect everything under it. So if I put magic bullet looks all over the f all over the layers, it will affect all over the layers. So I'm just I'm just gonna put some color correction. So this is what mine looked like with color correction with magic bullet looks. If you want to see a comparison of it without the color correction, then here it is. Um, I guess I taught you everything. Um, Main, most of the things about 3D tracked optical flares. Um, this is actually one of the types of tracked optical flares. There's motion tracked optical flares and 3D tracked. This is the 3D tracked optical flares. Leave a comment if you want a tutorial about the motion tracked optical flares and um, leave a like, comment, tell me what I did wrong or tell me any recommendations. Um, you want um, leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, and subscribe for more.